what an opening round that was. We have a title fight, it seems, between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. That's if the rest of the season is represented by that race, then we have an incredible season to look forward to. Um, this is Bahrain, in my opinion. So starting off, um, I just Mazepin, right? Is la that that weekend was laughable? How bad he is! I because obviously I, I I thought maybe you know he you know despite the contra controversy, he might have actually gotten okay at racing. Not being a person, but at racing. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. He, uh, yeah, he's really not. He's really just bad. He really is bad. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get to all the drivers, uh, you know, particularly in a moment. Um, I thought I would talk about the old track limits waffle and all of that. From what I understand... The reason Verstappen, so if you don't know, which if you don't know, I don't know why, Verstappen uh, overtakes Hamilton on the last lap, or maybe the second last lap, or whatever, near the end, um, but then he had to give the position back because of he extended track limits at turn four, but Hamilton had been extending those track limits the entire race, and then the FIA said, no, you can't do that anymore even though you could do it on Saturday you're not allowed to do it in the race um, no, you're not allowed to do it on Saturday you are allowed to do it in the race and then halfway through they say no you're not allowed to do it anymore uh, well you can but just do it a bit and don't make it obvious it's very confusing they need to make it the same rule for the whole weekend not different for different drivers or different depending on how much you go over it just you know but if two wheels are over the yellow line you get a warning for every and qualifying lap time deleted and in the race you get a warning do it again you get a penalty whatever not yeah it was just a mess and it's sad because it it didn't ruin the race the, you know nothing would ruin the ending but it 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 dampened the uh the happiness of of knowing there's going to be a close title fight because it's kind of like you know well you know, mercedes are going to sort their their stuff out very soon, so you know we need Max Verstappen to have as many good performances as early on, and so it's just a bit annoying that Verstappen didn't win because if he had win, I think it puts more pressure on Mercedes, and they're just going to be even closer. But if Hamilton gets early wins like this, it's going to be less close. I feel so. That's kind of my my thoughts on that. And uh, the next thing is F two pop into F2 um, I didn't do predictions for F2 in 2021 predictions but I'd just like to say something now after the first race I wonder if Piastri has a chance at winning obviously he won the um, uh, the second sprint race he won the second sprint race and he would have won the third feature race or he, he was he, you know you can't say for sure but he was in with a good chance until he was spun by, who was it, someone. So he spun with someone or got hit. Maybe it was Tictum. No, because Tictum was third. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Might have been Lungard, I'm not sure. But he was spun, um, kind of took him out uh, of, the, of the, the race, or at least took him out of having a good chance to do well. So that's unfortunate for Piastri. Really good that Lawson got a win. Obviously rookie there as well. And Guan Yu Zhu, um, winning the feature race, he could be a, a title contender in, in his third year of F2. Um, a lot of people said he should have been the, got the Alpine seat last year. 
instead of Alonso. But uh, we, we'll see. I, I think um, if Gasly doesn't get the seat next year in Alpine, I think if Piastri wins, he has a very good chance of, of having that seat. So um, that's that's kind of a little bit of F2. So you have Lawson winning the first race, Piastri the second, and Gran Yuzu the third. Um, F2 is always exciting. Um, so And it's looking like it's going to be a decent season there. Moving on then to a little a little segment I'm going to run throughout the whole season, um, where I'm essentially going to go through all of the drivers, give them a rating between zero and ten, uh, including points, so six point two, eight point nine, um, and tally them up uh, at the after every weekend. We'll have a little championship of our own. Um, based on how well a driver does not based on if obviously if you win you don't necessarily get the top uh, you might if it's a really good race but um, it's just based on your whole weekend in general you know quality the race um, how well you performed in the machinery you have so I think what I'm going to do is start from the bottom of the grid or of um, start from the bit of, bottom of how, how they finished and move up to obviously the winner, Lewis Hamilton. So, starting off, Mazepin. His grade, or not his grade, uh, WTF1, his grade is um, his score, I'll say. 2.1 I've given him. I don't think anyone's disagreeing. If anything, I've gone too high. The only reason I've done that is because, to be fair to him, he did he did get the the car started. Do you know what I mean? You know, he did get off the line, and he, you, you know, he made it to the first corner. Didn't make it out of it, but he made it to the first. And that list that's a achievement, right? Um, yeah, it's a good start to his F one career. I think you know, spinning out at turn one on his debut, it's, it's you know, what more could he do really? Um, I think he is a future world champion, for sure. 2.1 for him. Great rating. Oh, he really just is bad, isn't he? So bad. And he came last in quali by like a second to his own teammate. Oh, it's just bad. Next up, 19th, Alonso. Obviously, he retired um, uh, because of... I th I'm not really sure what it was. Was it a, t a turbo issue or brake? It was a rear brake, wasn't it? That was it. Rear brake issue, I think. At least that's what they said on the radio, I believe. So, if you look at the actual race finish, it wasn't good. But his quali qualified ninth, um, beating his teammate by loads. And looking at the actual race, it was decent. You know, he was fighting with science, he was fighting with Vettel, he was making some decent overtakes, he would have gotten points. If it wasn't for his DNF, so I've given him an eight, an eight point zero. I think it's good. Um, as I said, eight is decent. It's not, not not spectacular. It's a good race. That's what an eight kind of is. Bang in the middle, not in the middle of the. Next up, Latifi. I'm just going to say it now. Seven point six. It was so meh. It was the it was the definition of a meh race. He DNF. I, I don't even think they covered it. Um, his quality was okay. No, it wasn't. It was seventeenth. It was poor. Um, at least he wasn't qualifying last like it was last year. Um, but I, it was yeah, but it was just bad, wasn't it? It was just really bad. It wasn't bad. It was poor and nothingness. So seven point six. There's nothing really more to comment on there. He didn't really get shown much. Pierre Gasly. This was unfortunate, wasn't it? Right here, his retirement. Obviously, his race was ruined on on lap one when he lost his front wing which was by the looks of it his fault um he uh, j drove into ricardo or someone doesn't really matter lost his front wing had to pit put him to the back ended up retiring anyway but despite that you know his recovery was okay he started getting back up a bit um and his quality was really, really good, obviously, qualifying P5. So I would give him an 8.1, purely because of the quality and the fact he did get unlucky. And he was looking like he could have been maybe 4th, 5th, 6th. 
if that didn't happen. So 8.1 for Pierre Gasly. Next up, Mick Schumacher in his debut, and it wasn't great. Obviously, beat his teammate in qualifying by nearly a second, really, really good. Um, but the race, he qualified, he finished last out of all the, the running cars, which is expected. You know, I'm not expecting points from him, but he did have the spin. So, you know, that was a driver error in the end of the day. Uh, he'll get better with experience. I feel more confident after that, if I'm being honest with you, that he could pick up points if there's a really crazy race later on. Once he's maybe a bit more comfortable, he could. Um, but I've given him a 7.7 because .7, realistically it wasn't a good race, you know, as much as I do love him. Got to be a bit honest here. 7.7. .7. Um, the spin was unfortunate. Oh, next up, Sebastian Vettel. Ah, oh, Seb. New start, they said. Aston Martin. You would be back in the... Back to your winning ways. Starts last on the grid, comes 15th. It's a 7.2. I've given him a 7.2. It probably would have been maybe a 7.6, 7.7. Because his recovery was okay. He went into 14th or something after the last lap. After the first lap, sorry. But then, what was he doing with Ocon? Just what What was that? Just rear-ended him. like, And then said, <laughs> Ocon changed line. And Ocon, you can watch the footage, Ocon stays in the same line the entire time. Uh, yeah, Ocon was completely in the right and it messed up Ocon's race and I don't like that to be honest, I'm not a fan of Seb smashing into the back of Ocon um, and we're in his race um, yeah, Seb, that was poor to be honest everything about that weekend was just not very good 7.2 second lowest other than Nikita because at least he made it past the first corner and he actually did that bit quite well Mazepin didn't anyway George Russell, 8.0 for George. Good quality, made it into Q2, and he'd say Q3, made it into Q2, um, which I think we're going to see a lot this year, George making it into Q2. Maybe he won't become that much of a spectacle when he does make it into Q2, but at the moment, you know, for me, that's strong for a Williams making it into Q2. Um, um, race, made up a place, um... It's just a good race, isn't it? Like, nothing spectacular. Probably could have been lower. Probably gone on the, quite on the high end there. But I'm going to stick with my... Well, I've done 8.0 for George Russell. Next up, Esteban Ocon. I've given him a 7.8. Um, it was a really bad quality. Qualifying 16th for really, really bad. Uh, but his race was quite good. Until, obviously, Sebastian Vettel drove right into him. Um... Which wasn't, as I said, wasn't Esteban's fault. Decent race, was making up positions. Could have been in the points. Probably would have been in the points. Um, they were fighting, they were fighting, you know, down the lower end of the points, possibly. Probably maybe one or only two. But um, it could have been points if it wasn't for that. So I think a 7.8 is fair. Next up, Antonio Giovanazzi. Qualified 12th, finished 12th. Beat his teammate. Could have... Oh, sorry, didn't beat his teammate in quality, didn't beat the teammate in the race. Um, 7.7. .7. If he'd beat his teammate in the race, maybe a 7.9 or an 8 or something. But yeah. He, he lost to his teammate where he should have beaten him because he beat him in quality. I didn't see any issues or nothing was broadcast. So I'm going to assume that um, it was, wasn't an incredible race from him. And next, Kimi Raikkonen, the Iceman. I love Kimi Raikkonen. Um, and he had a good race, 8.0 I'm giving him, again looking at that, maybe similar to George, probably quite high, um, but I do think he deserves it, looking at the fact, yes he only qualified 14th, should have been better, um, when you look at Giovinazzi qualifying 12th in the race, he was on fire, um, uh, just... Just he was just quick. He he was just quick. You know, there was no outstanding overtakes, but there there he was making up positions. I think um, there was one overtake he made on um, uh, who was it? Was it Ocon? I can't remember. There was one overtake that uh, they they kind of showed, and it was, it was very nice around the outside. Um, 
finished 11th, could have been points, close to being points, I'm giving him an 8.0, considering that Alfa Romeo, yes it's faster, but I, I still think it's not a huge improvement on last year, and when they're fighting the Williams, they need someone like Raikkonen who's going to get them points, and I think he could beat Giovinazzi this year, which I didn't think was going to happen, but based on that race, Gio just didn't look extremely confident, Raikkonen just seemed really with it. Next up, Stroll, 7.8, quality 10th, finished 10th, could have lost a point if he wasn't careful. Decent race, not much to say. Beat his teammate by a lot, so 7.8 is fair, nice, good. Moving on to Yuki Sonoda. What a race. I'm, I'm starting to like this guy a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. You all know my favourite is Lando Norris. But this guy, this guy gets close. I mean, you know, he what a drive, man. Um... His quality was 13th, which actually wasn't bad for a rookie in a new car, which is fast, but it's not its not really fast. You know, it's still not top of the midfield. McLaren is still above them, I think, on, on pure pace. So so is, so is Ferrari and, and maybe Alpine. Maybe not Alpine looking at it now. So qualifying 13th wasn't bad, but people, because obviously his teammate qualified 5th, so... You know, you could see that as uh, not a bad, a, a, quite a bad quality. But then in the race, oh, what a race. Ninth, two points for the team. If he can do that all season long, um, while Gasly's still up there getting, you know, maybe a podium, every, maybe a podium, um, and, and, and consistent every now and again, getting in the upper half of the points, maybe fifth, sixth, sometimes fourth and third, obviously. Um, and Sonoda can kind of sit there getting seventh and ninths and eighths and that. Alpha Tauri are a force to be reckoned with, um, with two extremely good drivers, and Sonoda gets an 8.4 because he's really, really good. Carlos Sainz in the new Ferrari qualified eighth, finished eighth, 7.9. Would have been an eighth, would have been an eighth, would have been uh, an eight or, or more, but um, obviously he didn't beat his teammate. Um, is kind of something I guess I'm going to bait this a lot of did you beat your teammate obviously he's in a new car but and, t and it will he will get better and I'm completely ready for him to get better um completely or not ready could I'm excited to see him get better and start challenging up them more I think in a few races time same with Ricardo they're going to really be battling uh Perez Norris Leclerc Ricardo that that fight for fourth is just going to be so so close um and, and, I'm, and I'm excited for it. But, yeah, Science 7.9. Uh, next up, Leclerc. Um, qualified 5th. 6th in the race. He did, did lose two positions. Um, but the Ferrari is not that fast. The Ferrari is not a, f a fourth place quality car. He even said it himself. So I've given him an 8. Uh, one more than Science because he beat him in the race. And he beat him in quality. So, you know, I think it's fair. A very good quality though, that's kind of what got him up there was his the fact his quality was so good. But he did get overtaken by Norris Perez and Ricardo. No, he didn't get overtaken by Ricardo. Whoops, sorry. He came sixth in the race. Um got overtaken by Norris and Perez, not Ricardo. Didn't get overtaken by Ricardo, see? So that's why he deserves the hate. Next up Ricardo. Qualied sixth, lost a place, ended up seventh. It wasn't a great race from, from Ricardo. I've given him a 7.9 because of the good quality of beating Norris in the qualifying. And d the decent race, um, he couldn't overtake Leclerc. It's just, he just seems a bit off at McLaren so far, doesn't he? I think he'll get better. I do think he'll gain more confidence, but he's not the late-breaking Daniel Ricardo that we kind of know. So it was interesting, but I think he'll get better and it'll all sort itself out. 7.9 for Daniel Ricciardo. Next up, Sergio Perez. This was crazy. Obviously, bad qualifying in 11th. It was bad. There's no way around that. And his score would have been higher if it wasn't because of that, for that qualifying. And then on the formation lap, his car just shut down completely. Just the, the dash went black. Everything went black. I don't know how he got it started again. I was, I'm a bit confused how he did that because it just turned off. Like, it just completely turned off. I think pretty, I thought you needed some, you know, special ways to turn that on, but he managed it. He turned it on and he started from the pit, started dead last, 
and came fifth, uh, 8.2. Great race. Uh, something he was just flying through, wasn't he? All the overtakes were just seen in the bottom right. He was just overtaking everyone. Just goodbye, Russell. Goodbye, Ocon. Goodbye, Giovinazzi. Goodbye, Ocon. Just uh, everyone was just getting, just getting sent by him. And a fifth is great. Um, and I think obviously if he had qualified higher, he would have probably beat Bottas. Personally, that's what I think. Um, definitely, if he had started eleventh, um, he would have beat Norris. And if he can, if he can qualify fourth, you know, qualify, you know, you know, Verstappen, Hamilton, Bottas, Perez can be top four every time. I think Bottas is going to have a hellish time because and Mercedes because it's going to allow Verstappen to battle Hamilton and not have to battle. Hamilton and Bottas. So yeah, 8.2 for him. Then 4th place, Lando Norris. What a great race from Lando Norris. Qualified 7th straight away, overtaking, uh, overtaking Leclerc. Um, getting right up there, overtaking Ricardo. Um, and yeah, I'm giving him an also an 8.2. Um, his quality wasn't great. Um, better than Perez, but um, I think the, the reason I've given him the same as Perez is because his quality was better. Uh, the overtakes in the race were his, his race was obviously not as eventful as Perez's, maybe because Perez had more overtakes. But overall, they both had just really good races, and they both I think they both should get an eight point two. Third place, Valtteri Bottas. Well, not third, who came third, but Valtteri Bottas, seven point seven. Yeah, it's harsh, but he needs to do better if he wants to keep them at Sadie seat for next year. Coming third in every race this season is not going to cut it. Um, if he's not beating Verstappen, they don't, Mercedes are going to are going to need to swap him out because if next year if Red Bull really bring their game, Mercedes need two really good drivers, which is something maybe Red Bull now have, and and quite frankly Mercedes don't with Valtteri Bottas. And as much as I like the guy as a person. His driving just wasn't there today. If he had had the pit stop, I'll give this to him. If he hadn't had the slow pit stop, he maybe could have challenged Verstappen more. But I still don't think he had the overall pace this weekend. Third, um, it just, yeah, the overall pace this weekend was just always off. Um, 7.7 because it was poor. No one's saying, wow, Valtteri did a great job this weekend. Um, he needs to be beating Verstappen and, and Hamilton if he wants to keep that seat, really. Uh, next up, second place for Stappen. I've given him an 8.4. Um, I think I'm going to get a lot of disagrees with how I rated Hamilton and Verstappen. But yeah, yes, it was a really good race. There's not much I can fault other than the fact uh, he, you know, could he have stretched more time between um, Hamilton and himself during the pit stop period, which is when he lost track position to Hamilton. Could he have, you know, just extended the gap, extended that gap from you know more and more, uh, which is what you need to do to win the race, and he didn't. Um, and Hamilton and won, but obviously the track limits he would have won if it wasn't for that. So I'm, I'm a bit confused myself. Um, Michael Massey seriously has some explaining to do, and they need to make sure they fix it for the rest of the races because it's confusing everyone. If the drivers are confused, um, which Verstappen clearly was then I don't understand how they expect the people watching to understand. So an 8.4 for him, and Hamilton an 8.5. I've done this. They both had really good races, but at the end of the day, Hamilton won. Hamilton beat him. So I've given Hamilton one more. I, I was thinking I'll just give them the same. I'm going to both give them an 8.4 or an 8.5. But you know what? Hamilton ended up winning, and at the end of the day, stuff like that happens. It's track limits, you know, So, and you've got to pay the price. 8.4 for Verstappen, 8.5 for Hamilton. Um, you could give them the same, but I've decided to give Hamilton one more because it's really going to spark some some debate. That's it. Those are all 20 drivers ranked from 0 to 10. Um, this is the table of how they look. So Hamilton at top. Um, obviously, Sonoda quite high. There they are, a lot of 8s, a lot of 7.8s and stuff. Um, and Mazepin at the bottom. Uh, that's Bahrain, in my opinion. I'll see you in two weeks' time for Imola. 
uh, where hopefully Verstappen continues to bring the fight to Sir Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> See you in a bit.